Hey Maximizers and welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal. I am a strategic money coach and I am here to help you be intentional with your money so you can do more of what you want. For today's video, I'm super excited because it's a collaboration with a bunch of other amazing couponers and we are gonna be sharing with you our tips for inflation. Now for me personally, I'm gonna be sharing with you five tips to help you save money on your groceries due to all of these rising costs, right? I'm gonna share with you my money saving strategy, what me and my family do, what some of my clients do in order to help them not spend so much money when the cost of things are increasing. So let's dig right on in. My very first tip is to create a meal plan. You can have a weekly meal plan, you can have a monthly meal plan, but the point of a meal plan is for you to know exactly what you're eating, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. So you can decide for the week or for the month, this is what we're having for breakfast, this is what we're having for lunch, this is what we are having for dinner, these are the snacks for myself and or for my kids. This is gonna help you save money because you are gonna take away the de decision making process of what's for dinner, what's for lunch, and that's going to require you to just impulse shop less. Because if you are every day deciding what you're gonna eat for dinner, you're gonna spend more money in the grocery store, the prices are already increased, and you're not gonna have a good overview of like, what do I need for the week? So the meal plan is gonna help you get all of your information down on paper, help you spend one day deciding for the week, and then you don't have to think about it again. Then going into step two, once your meal plan is created, you are gonna craft a specific grocery list of the things that you need in order to complete that meal plan, snacks, drinks, etc. Now, a meal plan is not meal prepping. We're not gonna be cooking a bunch of things and putting it in containers. Meal planning is just the act of you deciding what you're gonna eat each day. Then, you can make your, your grocery list as detailed as possible, right? For example, if you wanna make spaghetti and you already have ground beef and you already have pasta noodles, great. On your grocery list for your spaghetti dinner, all you need is pasta sauce and garlic bread and anything else that you may wanna add to your spaghetti. But you don't need to buy all the ingredients because you already have two of the ingredients at home. So making your meal plan will allow you to clearly see what you need in order to prepare those meals at home. Now, if you like to eat out, that's totally fine. Your meal plan can say, you know, on Tuesday we're eating dinner out or Friday it's a pizza night or Sunday it's family dinner at grandma's house. It doesn't matter. It's just making sure that you know where your money is gonna be going when it comes to food. Now, people are probably asking, well, Crystal, how does this help me save money? This helps you save because you're not gonna be in the grocery store every day. The more you go to the grocery store, the more you're gonna spend money and the prices are already higher. But if you have a clear plan of what you're eating each day and a clear grocery list of what you need, that's gonna take you to my third tip, which is to look at your local stores, not just grocery stores. Because I am here to tell you that shopping at one store is not always the most cost effective. Buying in bulk at BJ's and Sam's Club and Costco is not always the lowest price. Yes, you have a lot of it, but it may not be for the cheapest price. Now you're gonna sit down and you're gonna spend 30, 40 minutes a week and you're gonna look at your local stores, your local grocery stores, your Walmart, your Target, if you have um, a membership to BJ's or Costco's or Sam's Club, you are going to look at all of their store ads. And based on that grocery list that you need to fulfill, you are gonna decide what stores you're going to shop at. Now, I'm not telling you to drive all around town and waste gas, but for most of us, there's stores in our general shopping area. I like to choose one, maybe two stores to shop at every other week, right? So for instance, we don't go to BJ's every single week. We may go to BJ's every, you know, six weeks. But if it's a BJ's week, any of the things that I need on my grocery list from BJ's, I will get them, right? If it's a Publix week, whatever's BOGO this week at Publix, that's a super good deal, we are going to get. So you're gonna look at those store ads and you're gonna decide where am I gonna get the most for my money? Where am I gonna spend the lowest amount out of pocket by going to these stores? Once you decide your stores, this is when you need to set your clear budget. This is tip number four. Setting a budget helps you save money because it forces you to be creative and only buy what you decided that you need. So for example, 
If your grocery budget for the week is $100 and all you have is $100 out in cash when you decide to go to Walmart and your local grocery store, you do not have the capacity to impulse shop. You do not have the capacity to buy anything that is not on your list because you only have $100 cash. So when you set that budget, this is also helping you to save money and beat inflation because I'm going to give you another example. Maybe you wanted to cook chicken wings for your family. Chicken wings are more expensive than chicken legs. So with your budget, you may decide, hmm, wings are great, but they're more expensive. We need to get chicken legs instead. So instead of spending $22 on a pack of chicken, we're spending $12 on a pack of chicken, and we can stretch our $100 further, right? So we're still getting chicken, it's just we're getting legs versus wings. So when you are super intentional, and you've decided what you're going to eat, you've created your grocery list, you've decided what stores you're going to shop at, and then you've got your budget together, this is going to help you save a lot of money. Now, the fifth tip is where it takes it over the top. This is when you're going to use any coupons and rebates. So we're not going to buy any inserts. We're not stressing about printing coupons. We are going to use the store apps. So you remember those stores I told you to check out in your local area? You're going to download all of the store apps. You're going to set up your free accounts and you're going to go in and you're going to clip any coupons of things that you are going to buy that's going to lower your cash out of pocket. Right? If the waffles are buy one get one free at Publix and then there's a 50 cents digital coupon at Publix as well, we're going to clip that 50 cents digital and we're going to get our waffles for even cheaper, right? Maybe you are going to get those chicken legs at your local grocery store and they have a $1 off of any pack of chicken coupon. You're going to clip that coupon and you're going to use it. You're also going to sign up for the rebate apps. I bought a Shopkick, Fetch, Flues, and you're going to scroll through your rebate apps and you're going to see, is there rebates for anything that I need? So maybe Ibotta is giving us a dollar back on pasta noodles or a dollar back on paper towels, right? And we're going to get that specific item so that we can earn our cash back. Now, rebates allow you to recoup some of your money, but they're still a very important part here during inflation and then overall when you're shopping, period. So I would encourage you, Download the store apps, clip all of those digital coupons, use those to your advantage, and then once you get home, scan your receipts to the rebate apps. I do have a rebate app playlist. I will link in the description box so you can check out what rebate apps that I use and how you could potentially use them to help you save more money on the back end. So again, those are my top five tips in order to help you save on groceries when it comes to inflation. So tip number one is to create a meal plan. Tip number two is to create a detailed grocery list of the things that you need to complete your meal plan. Tip number three is to check out your local stores to see what's on sale at what store and decide what stores you're gonna shop at for the week. Tip number four is to set a budget. One thing I didn't say about the budget is, a good rule of thumb here with inflation is to set your budget around $125 per person per month. So for a family of four, your grocery budget will be somewhere between four to $500 per month and then break that budget down per week or per shopping trip. So that would be like $125 a week for a family of four. If you shop bi-weekly, it would be $250 every time you grocery shop. And then once you have your budget set, you are going to clip all of those coupons and use your rebate apps to help keep your out of pocket as low as possible. So these are my key tips for saving money on groceries and inflation. If you have any additional questions, let me know down in the comments. I would love, love, love to help you more. If you need help creating your meal plan, if you need help creating your budget, you're like, Crystal, I need help. I can definitely help you with that inside of my group coaching program, the Money Saving Academy. If you're interested in details, you can find all of them at moneysavingacademy.com. So when I thank you all so much for your love and support. I appreciate each and every one of you. Stay safe out there as you are shopping. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.